Hey everybody, it's Adam Tracy again, and I get a lot of questions about the Belize Payments license. And it used to be wildly popular, but then a few things have changed, in my opinion, which make it less desirable than what it perhaps used, used to have been. And, you know, from just a general kind of overview, it's very much in terms of process, like any other Caribbean nation payment license, Bahamas, BVI, wherever you're gonna go. Um, business plan, the whole nine yards, right? And the, the differences, I think, that have been implemented have changed the dynamic in such a way that it's less usable than what it used to be. So first, because Belize was long as a offshore haven, especially for like shell companies, right? And there were a lot of uh, involvement, especially like in the securities industry worldwide, where people would set up like hun literally hundreds of these shell companies in Belize and like hide securities holdings and do things of like that. And it cast a pall on the whole offshore financial services sector in Belize. So what they've done in response to that, even for non-regulated companies, is that in order to have a company in Belize, that company has to have a physical presence. So it's got an economic substance requirement. But that economic substance requirement is significant, than, more significant than really any other Caribbean nation. So the actual statute provides that a entity in Belize must have a physical presence commensurate with the scope of operations. So the more profitable you are, right, and this is all like reportable information, or the more volume you have, there's this sort of like subjective qualification that a regulator in Belize could say, well, not only do you need a license or an office, right, but you need an office of a specific size and that office must be manned by this number of local individuals providing some service. So I talk about here, I talk a lot about the empty office, like to meet your economic substance requirements. Well, in Belize, it's worse than it is perhaps anywhere in the world. So when you're talking about becoming regulated, you know, anywhere is going to have some economic substance requirements but you can usually get away with co-location and a very ministerial level employee and like really bring that cost down. You can't do that in Belize. Not to mention the fact that Belize isn't midtown Manhattan. Office space is really sort of at a premium and they know that, right? So you wind up paying quite a bit for this office space that's commensurate with the scope of operations. And you never know what that's going to be because the regulators are going to tell you. And for a payments licensee in Belize, you have a quarterly reporting obligation and an audited financial reporting obligation at the end of the year. And so they're constantly marking you because you're constantly reporting, whereas in most other jurisdictions, you report once a year. And they don't have similar language that says your physical location has to meet the scope of operations because you don't have to operate from Belize, but you still need to like support the local economy and have this crazy office space with all these people that seemingly may not do anything. Beyond that, what's different about the license is that there's a $75,000 uh, paid in capital requirement in order to get the license. Well, in most cases, and this doesn't go just for payments, but also for crypto gaming, you name it, there are, there's always a capital requirement. But in most cases, what you do is like you submit the capital requirement to a bank, the bank verifies it, and then you pass that along to the regulator, and then you can kind of move the money out of the account. Well, not in Belize. Belize requires you to have that 75, at minimum, $75,000 on account at all times. So it really becomes a deposit. So as long as you're operating, it has to be there, right? And they have the right, the regulators do, to increase that capital requirement based on, again, these quarterly reports, right? Like, so seemingly greater the volume, greater that capital requirement must be, and you can't move it, right? You can't touch it. So, unless you cease operations and you can move it out, but it might as well be a de facto deposit, right? 
So that's, those are two main things that differentiate the Belize payments license versus anything else, especially in the Caribbean, right? Outside of that, I would say it's pretty on par, right? Um, you know, the, still the difficulty is getting banking and getting the onboarding with Visa MasterCard, which, you know, other jurisdictions, especially in the Caribbean, it can be difficult. But Belize, even though they've taken these steps and they're technical compliant and doing all these things, it hasn't really like removed the alleged stain. So what I found is dealing with Visa MasterCard in Belize is actually more complex than say Bahamas, BVI, wherever else in the Caribbean. So it's, um, it's interesting, right? Like everything else is the exact same, you know, business plan, some mild qualification requirements, standard KYC for the, for the UBOs and all that. But I think for the cost, right, when it comes down to establishing that local presence and not being able to remove that capital requirement, that paid in capital requirement, it really becomes less valuable than say a license in the Bahamas where while the capital requirement may be higher, you have the ability to take the capital out. And while there is an economic substance requirement, you have the ability to co-locate and like lower costs, right? So it's like, yes, you have a space. Yes, maybe you have some ministerial employee answering the chat on your website, but you don't have to have, you know, a huge space in a very small, that is charging you midtown Manhattan rates and you get nothing for it, right? And that's, you know, again, I've chewed on that here a ton of times. Like, it's just never worth it, but you have to have it. It's just this sort of extortion payment. But that's the take, right? And like, you know, I'm not saying you can't, you know, operate. It's just there's probably better alternatives, right, in my opinion. So you have questions about Belize or anywhere else in the payment sphere, definitely hit me up, adam at adamtracy.io, and I will talk to you next time. Cheers.